Welcome back, Shalligators. Let's shred Lizzo. Mm. You know Lizzo is like my personal nemesis. Well, I have many nemesis, nemes, nemesis. I have many celebrity enemies, Meghan Markle, Selena Gomez, and they all have one thing in common. They all have one thing in common, the victim narrative. And I hate victims. There's a difference between someone who has been victimized by something and someone who decides to make it their entire personality. And boy, oh boy, thank you, Lizzo, for walking right into this. I love it when Lizzo does something in the news because she is such an interesting case study of literally the worst aspects that lie inside of all of us. Because what I see when I look at Lizzo is someone with an incredible amount of talent and potential who is focusing her life in all the wrong places. Lizzo's life revolves around things that are not exactly healthy, that don't strike me as having a lot of integrity. And as she herself seems to now finally be realizing, don't really make you happy. Your sexuality and your body, okay? So Lizzo announced that she's quitting music. I <laughs> quit, I quit. And Azealia Banks, a rapper who I am extremely afraid of, she, ooh, Azealia, she's a scary woman. But she's also pretty insightful a lot of the time. Now we've done a lot of videos on how to handle criticism. And we even recently did one in terms of Beyonce about how to like, change lanes and try something different. So we're gonna like borrow a little from these, switch gears just a little bit and talk about how to like literally react in real time to criticism when your boss, your family, your friends tell you feedback that is not positive. And by the way, if I ever say I want feedback, I mean positive, I mean a compliment. So please, please don't um, get it confused that I want constructive criticism or any criticism. I wanna hear that I'm pretty, okay? just. Write that down. We're gonna talk about how physically, what to say in the face of these moments, and you're like, <gasps> when you just wanna go berserk, berserk, or cry. How criticism is supposed to feel on the inside. I mean, are you supposed to be like, I love it, I thrive on it. And we're gonna talk about how to go back to the drawing board and figure out what your brand even is. Because I am a big believer in branding, and I think we talked about this maybe a little bit in the Beyonce video. I think that we should know what our brand is. And I'm not saying go be an influencer, go be on like LinkedIn, which is the most boring network ever imagined, or, or whatever. I'm not saying you need to have a brand to put yourself out in the world in some sort of public way. Branding to me is boundaries. Because if you don't know who you are, someone out there will try to tell you, and it will be to their advantage. If you're not chasing your dreams, you better believe someone is going to use you to chase theirs. So it's very important that you know exactly who you are, exactly what makes you happy, and what makes you feel actually not really okay, and that you learn how to stand firm in that. Given what I do for a living, this has been something that I've gotten very good at because it's part of my job, but it's something that I truly think almost everyone should be doing in their private life. So before we get started, speaking of branding, if you wanna change up your style, if you're like, it's spring, I'm sick of everything that's in my closet, but I'm not trying to run up my credit card bill, I've got you. XO Style Box to the rescue. It is my subscription clothing rental service. You get your first month free. And girl, these are clothes that range from $200 to $800. They're like no joke. You can swap as many times as you want in a month. You can send back some of it, all of it. You can keep things for a few months. Keep a jacket, keep a really nice elegant gown to wear a few times, or don't. Send it back, try some new styles. I really like XO Style Box. This little number is from there. Love this top. I like to just branch out and try some new things without the mega commitment, because if you ask anyone I've dated, I maybe have commitment issues, which is why I started this service. Thank you. Why clean up commitment issues when you can uh, extend it, when you can actually dial them up? Take it just out of your bedroom and into your closet. I love it. And don't forget to tag XO Style Box so I can see what you guys are wearing. Okay, we're gonna talk more about style as we go through this video, but first, Lizzo. So, Lizard, as you know, is embroiled in a lawsuit with her backup dancers who sued her for like, I think like racism or like weightism or not being body positive, who the fuck knows? Hostile work environment because she forced, forced them to go to these like sex shows in Amsterdam and like touch dancers and grope people. Listen, I've done videos on this. You know I, 
cannot stand Lizzo. The things we hate in other people are the things we hate in ourselves. And I look at her as like, the, the like if there's like a cringe monster inside me, like a monster that's made of like pure nightmare cringe. And it like breaks out of my chest and it runs wild into the world. It is Lizzo. It's Lizzo. It's my whole identity is my body. I act like I'm so happy, but yet I'm not because if you even push back at me a little bit, I dissolve into tears. I have so much talent, like classy, amazing talent and education. And yet all I want to talk about is my ass and my bus. And that's all I need to be valued for. I'm such a pick me. That is what lurks deep within my bosom. A horrible, food obsessed, body obsessed, pick me garbage monster. So Lizzo is very triggering for me. <laughs> I'm like, ah! That being said, as much as I really do not, in, mm -mm, I do think the lawsuit against her is kind of bullshit. Do I think it's a picnic to work for Lizzo? No, because she is, above all things, incredibly insecure. And if you've ever worked for a boss who's insecure or had a friend who's insecure or whatever, or if you've just been like in an insecure phase, you know it is pretty much a hellscape to be around those people. They're moody, they're capricious, they're punitive. All of these words mean they're an asshole. They're a complete asshole and they are going to make you suffer to get their jollies because their ego is so flaccid you know what that word means. So like bleh, that they have to cut other people down in order to feel less deficient. I can see Lizzo being kind of like that. Also, she hired people who are exactly like her, obese dancers who need a ton of attention. So A, birds of a feather flock together. I'm not at all surprised that these, that her like, her squad of curvy girls turned on her. I'm not surprised at all because they all suffer from the same affliction, which is a victim narrative and a pathological need for attention and an inordinate preoccupation with their own bodies and the bodies of others. But that doesn't mean she deserves to be slapped with a lawsuit. I don't think she does. If you want to see me shred Lizzo more, check out the other videos I've done on her. It's, it's a real good time. So seemingly because of the stress of this lawsuit or I honestly don't even know what, precipitated this, but Lizzo comes out, she's like, I'm quitting. This is giving Selena Gomez, right? Who is constantly quitting social media when usually she gets caught with her hand in the Hailey Bieber cookie jar, like liking mean tweets, like drunk off of Rumpelman's at two in the morning about Hailey, like mean tweets about Hailey. Because you know, Selena will say, I'm done. And it's like, what is her record? Like three hours? That's like her shortest. She's like, okay, I'm back. I, at the time of filming this, Tuesday at 1.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Lizzo has still quit the music industry. I give it till Friday. But then I also give it forever because I didn't realize she was still in it. Just whatever. Okay, so Lizzo posted this. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little bit better than how I found it. That makes me sad because I do think that that's what she wants. You know, I think she really wants to spread this message of like positivity and empowerment. Is that message, however, is the impetus for that message because she is obese and she needs to feel again because her ego is not in a good place and she can't cut down other people. You can't have thin negativity songs, but you can have fat positivity vibes, right? So when people's ego when your ego is not in a good place, you will do something psychologists call leveling, which is again, you will cut other people down till they're at your level, or you're gonna pump yourself up until you feel good enough. Lizzo typically does the latter, you know? She is going to be braggy and over the top about how much she loves herself, I love myself, ah! But she fails to realize that confidence is quiet. Confidence is not, I know they're gonna love me. I love me, I love me, damn it. That's not what confidence is. Confidence is, I'm fine if they don't love me. Lizzo does not feel that way. Let us keep reading. I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of every joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. The grammar there is all over the place. Can you please get your tenses right? I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. What didn't you sign up for, Lizzo? What didn't you sign up for? Do we need to look at some of the things you've posted on social media and suddenly you don't understand why people drag you for how you look? It is what you lead with. 
You know who agrees with me? Yes, the scary rapper Azealia Banks. This is what Azealia Banks said, and she did that song 212. I gun to my head, I can't tell you another song she's done, but she doesn't need to. 212, huh, slaps and will forever. I'm gonna kind of like change this for clarity because some of what she said is a little, um, it's a little like convoluted. I retract my cri criticism of you because it wasn't clicking about how insidious people, the corporate culture, were pushing you to demeaning initiatives. Basically, corporations, like you were being incentivized to be a clown. But sis, ooh, when Azealia Bank says, but sis, I don't wanna know what sucks. Your handle is Lizzo B Eating. I didn't realize this for a long time that Lizzo's Instagram handle is Lizzo B Eating. I thought it was like Lizzo B Eating. Like I thought that was her last name. And then someone's like, no, it's B Eating. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Azalea says, no, I'm not kidding him. You've definitely given the public license to laugh at and with you by twerking at the Burger King counter and bathing in a tub of Skittles. Self-deprecation was certainly the aesthetic you chose to introduce yourself with. So I don't see why you'd play victim rather than just stop intentionally inviting people to make jokes about you. You're a beautiful girl with a handle on music theory, Grammy awards, and tons of success. Just change the narrative and go highbrow Philharmonic on these hoes and collab with Ryuchi Sakamoto. Well, if Ryuchi Sakamoto's back on his bullshit, then so am I. I don't know who he is, but he's Japanese. And have you been watching Shogun? Holy shit. Oh my God, it's insane. Azealia makes an excellent point. This is the narrative you chose to introduce yourself with. So don't be mad at people for buying what you're selling. You lead literally in photos with your big butt all over the place, sex, sexuality, I don't care, rah, rah, rah. If you say I don't care while presenting an extremely controversial point of view or personality, and listen, again, because this is triggering for me because I, I get it, I get it. What didn't you sign up for? When people criticize me, I'm not like, how? What? I'm like, no, I get why people criticize me. You can go fuck yourself. I'm not going to change. That's fine. But I'm not like, what? Like, I get it. I understand how I present. I understand like, you know, my persona on social media. And it's not a character, you know? Like, of course I dial certain things up because it's entertaining, but I'm not, I'm not like playing a part. I'm not like a completely different person offline. And you know what? Neither is Lizzo. Neither is Lizzo. Because if someone did not have their, if their integrity said, I'm not the kind of person to show my body that way. I'm not the kind of person to yay say unhealthy behavior and unhealthy like bodies. Um, there is no amount of money you could throw at that person to make them do it. There just isn't. And if there is, that person wouldn't be worth watching. They wouldn't have any clout because they would be so hollow and fake. You're like, ugh. Lizzo is authentic in the way that she presents herself. That is what she wants attention for, but she can't handle the heat and so now she's getting out of the kitchen. I don't believe for one second that Lizzo will stay retired because she is the embodiment of what we call around here, the cold-blooded animal. Now the actual cold-blooded animal, lizard or whatever, they rely on their environment to stay alive. They, they cannot live someplace that's cold. A warm-blooded animal generates heat from inside. This is the same with self-esteem. A warm-blooded person, they have that attitude of, I hope people like me, but it's okay if they don't because I like me. I am generating that warmth from within as much as I can. It doesn't mean I don't need friends. It doesn't mean I wanna be an outcast, but hey, I know my value. I'm very in touch with it. A cold-blooded person doesn't. They live for the likes. They live for the clicks, the clout, the praise, and they will inevitably objectify themselves. Lizzo does it with her body, all of her talent, all of her humanness. Maybe she's funny, maybe she's smart. I don't fucking know, but I could draw her big old body from memory, okay? Selena Gomez does this with her relationship with Justin Bieber, as evidenced by the fact she is endlessly pressed about Haley Baldwin. So these two women are demonstrating based on 
how they identify as a human being in this world with my body by who I'm dating as cold-blooded animals. I am more than my body. I am more than who I'm dating. I am more than this career. I'm more than where I live. I am all these amazing things on the inside and it's amazing if other people do see it also, but I actually don't need them to because I know it. And the people I truly genuinely value in my life, they know it as well. Lizzo cannot say the same. She cannot say the same. So she'll be back. She's like Tinkerbell. Like you have to clap to keep her alive. And I think her self-esteem is in such a bad place that this horrible tipping point can occur where it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative attention that people are getting. Don't you know people like that? Like the, your crazy friend Lacey, right? And she goes out and she's the loudest person at the bar and she's insane and she's like starting fights with guys and with their girlfriends and she doesn't give a fuck because she just needs that spotlight. She doesn't care if it's a spotlight of Broadway or a cop's flashlight in her face. She just needs to be the center of attention. This is why I talk about celebrities because it's like, oh, you're just, you tear them apart. No. I dismantle them. I'm doing these autopsies on these characters because we know Lizzo. We know a Selena Gomez. We know a Meghan Markle. We see these people in our day-to-day -day life and we cannot look at celebrities and be like, wow, they've got it all figured out. They are, they are crazy lacy on steroids. Are you kidding me? They don't have it figured out. They're the worst offender of all in terms of all these psychological issues. And so we can learn from them. But maybe it's time these celebrities start to learn from us. So Lizzo says she's quitting music. Everyone's dragging her. She's tired of being clowned. If I could sit her down and say, listen, I'm your new PR person. I'm going to wave a magic. I'm going to wave a magic wand. It's my Starbucks straw. I'm going to wave a magic wand over you. And we are going to redo your image from the ground up. This is what I would do. And I want you to tell me in the comments what you would do. Tell me. Two things you would tell Lizzo to start doing and two things she is never allowed to do again, okay? The number one thing Lizzo needs to do is get thinner. Sorry, not sorry, because she is never ever going to sell the narrative that she is a confident, happy, whole, authentic person when she weighs what she does. Because you know what? Being fat is a nightmare. I've been fat. I weighed 50 pounds more than I do now. And no, I wasn't the fattest person that's ever lumbered across planet Earth. But for me and my size, and not even my size, not even my bone structure, my own integrity, how I view myself, how I want the world to view me and react to me, that was too much. I was not happy. And so you guys have watched me lose weight over the last two years. And I have never in my life met someone who has truly gotten to a good, legitimately healthy weight and said, fuck, I wish I weighed 70 pounds more. Don't you just miss those 80 pounds? Oh, I miss that sound of my thighs would rub together. And, you know, I miss feeling every single joint when I walk. I don't even notice my joints. Not me neither. It's like I've lost all my best friends. I know. Being fat is a nightmare. Don't let people like Lizzo gaslight you as she's trying to gaslight herself because that's easier than going to the gym, eating right. Don't let her gaslight you into telling you you should be happy fat. Why on earth should you? It's horrible for your health. It's not a lot of fun socially. It's bad to shop. It isn't, you don't feel good sexually. What, what's so fun about it exactly? What's the great part about being fat? And I'm not saying you need to be emaciated and some anorexic sorority girl, but come on. You know you're miserable. I was. Free yourself from having to be part of this demented, illogical body positivity tribe that again, is only out to gaslight you. Because why? Because why? Let's go back to that concept of leveling. Their egos are bad, as they should be, because again, being fat sucks. So if they can just bring everyone else down to where they are, Suddenly there's no contrast. So all of this inner turmoil, this cognitive dissonance they feel about what they weigh versus what they want to weigh, like these concepts banging into each other every single day, it's easier if they just recruit everybody else. Then there's no, there's no contrast. Don't fall for that. Fat people aren't happy. And if they are, honestly, they shouldn't be. The health problems that are coming down the pipeline joint replacements, female cancers, uh, the, the CPAP machine. What the fuck is that thing? I mean, weird hormone things. You know, you can grow a beard if you get too overweight. And again, fat 
thin. These are relative terms based on your unique body, girl. I'm not saying you need to look like Giselle or Sydney Sweeney or anybody, but you need to look a cardiologist, not Lizzo, a cardiologist in the eye and have that person say, you are at a healthy BMI. There's plenty of data about what healthy is and what healthy isn't. I don't think you need to be listening to a pop star who absolutely hates herself on the inside to tell you what healthy is. You wanna listen to anybody? Listen to me. I don't hate myself. I have a great life. I'm so happy. And the foundation of my happiness, I will tell you now, is my fitness. It is my fitness routines. I prove to myself every single day when I go to the gym, even if I don't have a great workout, even if I just walk on the treadmill, I did something. And I overcame a mindset that told me, don't go for that thing you want. Be less. Dial down those expectations. Me. I overcome it. And that is as powerful and as healthy and beneficial to me as whatever I'm doing in that workout. It's the mindset workout. Then I have it stacked throughout the rest of the day. I eat healthier. I pay more attention to myself. I feel good about myself. I don't let people manipulate me. I don't respond to that Snapchat from the fuck boy. I shut down the friend of me. I ask for a little bit more in a brand partnership deal. And you know what I don't do? I don't quit. People can be as mean to me as they want to. You're not running me out of fucking anywhere. And that's because I have a foundation of self-esteem and I feel bad for Lizzo that she doesn't. But is she trying to? Is she trying to? So that is number one that she needs to do. She's gotta get her ass in shape. She is gonna feel so much better. Go on Ozempic, girl, whatever. But you're gonna have to do a lot of emotional work, even if you're on Ozempic, to understand why did you get to this place you know, in the first place. What does food mean? I had to do all of this work and I've done a lot of videos on my experience with those up. It was incredibly positive. I credit it for so much in my life. However, I also credit my therapist and my mindset coach and my trainer and myself. The Ozempic was a big part of it, but it wasn't the only part. And as I'm not really even on it anymore, now it's like, I, Jesus is taking the wheel. Like I really gotta do this myself. Coming up with these systems to put in place so that I do feel good about myself, so that I'm not going back to this mental place where I think I'm so unworthy of being healthy and looking good. Sh fuck it, I'm gonna eat two sleeves of Thin Mints, whatever, who cares? I care, I care, I value myself more now. So what else should Lizzo do from a PR standpoint? I think Azealia Banks is exactly right. She should take the highbrow philharmonic route. Lizzo is a classically trained flautist. How many other, just celebrities out there can say that. How many other black women can say that? Like what an incredible feat. I mean, do you, I can't even imagine how much time and practice that took and like how many things she must have missed, like being a teenager or how different that was maybe from a lot of other young black girls that she was growing up around or like what did young black guys say to her about that? Or like, that's fucking gay or like whatever. Were they, were they cool with it? That's what young white guys would say, you know? Like they're making fun of the band gigs. It's not a racial thing. I mean, what an amazing thing if she was able to speak to young women and be like, hey, you know what? If you wanna be famous, you gotta become an expert in something. This is what I became an expert in. And let me tell you, it wasn't the cool thing. It wasn't like theater or tap dance. I don't even know if those are cool. You know, like I wasn't the jock. I wasn't like the smarty pants. I didn't speak fluent French and do the exchange programs. I was like, do do like playing the flute all the time. What an amazing thing if she could give that back, not just to a black population, to anybody. I would love to hear about that because as you pursue excellence in your life, your circle gets small, your schedule gets tight. You have to say no to more things than you say yes to. And people, they talk. And again, here comes this leveling again. Here comes this leveling. Because you might be shining a light all of a sudden as you pursue excellence and mastery. You might become a very unpleasant mirror for people who are not doing that. I've talked to you about my experience living here in Montana and people, a lot of people hate me. Hate me with the fire of a thousand suns and I literally, it's just for, it's because I exist. I'm not like, out, I, I, I work in my house, I have a small circle, I'm like this little island of a person and people are like, fuck you, they hate me. Because I, I mean, I guess, I shine some sort of light on everything they're not doing in their lives. I don't know, that's the only thing. 
everything they're not able to achieve or they think they're not able to achieve. I honestly don't know. I don't know. But from a psychological standpoint, that's all I can really come up with. I'm the reason they can't afford a house. No, I'm actually not. I'm the reason that they're stuck in some dumb job and I get to be an influencer, fuck you. Oh, go, then go be an influencer. If it's so easy and I can go fuck myself, then go do it, I don't know. My point is, you might have that same experience as you are trying to, to dare greatly and to ascend to levels that maybe no one in your circle has like tried to achieve before. You are going to become very disruptive disruptive and again that leveling people are going to either like puff themselves up well I, that's cool i mix concrete that is cool i can't mix concrete would you like to put it in my backyard i'm looking for somebody like that's cool very few people are actually going to do that they'll they'll try to do it and then it's not gonna like it's not gonna hit you know they're not gonna get that like mm, that like ego thing that they that they're trying to feel where it's like yeah we're the same now they know that they're not so they're going to switch tactics and they're going to start to cut you down they're gonna to start to cut you down. Go back to where you came from. That's what I hear a lot. Go back to where you came from. I'm like, why don't you go back to where you came from? Because the only people who deserve to be here are the Native Americans. So that's my advice. If you're gonna rebrand, make no apologies. Prepare yourself for the disruption and look at the people who do it. Those are not your people. And they might be, they might like be your people. They might be your parents. They might be your best friends, might be your boyfriend. Those are not your people. I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Believe me, I have reinvented myself many times in my life, many times. You know, I moved to New York when I was 22. I didn't know a single person. Within nine months, I had a book deal at Random House. A year after that, I had a TV show. You think there weren't people who are like, what are you doing? There were plenty. Reinvention comes at a price. And it's going to be those people who are disrupted by you daring a little greatly. Push them as far to the side as you possibly can. And if you can't, hustle in silence. People already don't like you. They already find you disruptive. If you are worried what those people are going to think, don't even let them in on it. But at some point, you're right. You know, a tipping point does occur, like Lizzo. When she wants to, if she, if she takes Azalea's advice and rebrands as this, you know, more highbrow person, which again, I will be shocked if she does. I hope she does. I will be, I will be cheering her on. If she's like, I'm devoted to health. I'm devoted to fitness. No more excuses. No more twerking. We're at the symphony. Let me give a motivational speech. Girl, I'll be the first one to buy tickets. But if I was a betting man. Here's the part where criticism comes into play. Like I said, we've talked about criticism before and feedback and all of that stuff. And it's it's tough because on one hand, you, you can't go too extreme. You don't want to be someone who's like, fuck everyone, no no feedback, close for feedback. I don't know, I don't care what you have to say, I don't care what you have to say. Bah, 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 bah. But you also can't be cold blooded, totally cold blooded, and accept everything. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Okay. Well, I shouldn't do that. Oh, okay. You can't live for other people, but you can't be so pigheaded that you're not taking in any sort of constructive feedback from people who truly like might have your best interest at heart. Do you not think that there have been some people, some like branding corporate people, white women named Elizabeth with a low bun and Ann Taylor separates who said to Lizzo, I wouldn't post that if I were you. I guarantee there have been. And do you know what Lizzo did? Fired them. I, I mean, I, I, this isn't chiseled to stone. I can't say this is a fact. I am just willing to bet that there were people who were like, ah, at some point in Lizzo's career, be like, I wouldn't go in that direction. She's like, I'm confident. Rah, 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 rah. Well, well, well. Elizabeth and her sensible shoes might have been on to something after all. And that's tough. That's a tough, tough place to realize that the Elizabeths and the Merediths, the Meridi of the world, maybe were onto something when they were giving you some feedback. Most people, when you paraphrase a criticism back to them, you say, I hear you. Can't promise I'm going to blindly obey, but I hear you. Maybe you could even go even higher on this like Buddha level consciousness and be like, 
thanks for telling me that. That probably wasn't easy to give me that kind of feedback because you know that this is so important to me. All right, that's manipulative, I like it. You know what they're gonna do? <sighs> they might physically exhale and lean back in their chair. If they do that, you're not gonna have to worry about this person butting in over and over again with the same criticism. Like, I hear you. People wanna feel heard. And again, most people, once they do, they're gonna let it go, they're gonna move on, you know? But if you're like, no, no, no! As Lizzo, you know, people have been giving her feedback about what she posts and how she acts for a very, very long time. And she, you couldn't tell her nothing. You couldn't tell her nothing, okay? She hit a wall and she's right. I'm sure not a lot of people are on her side anymore, especially like professionally. You know, this lawsuit hits and I'm sure she was looking around like, okay, who's in my corner? I don't know, maybe there weren't a lot of people there. Cause she said, I'm tired of being dragged by people in my life. Maybe there were people who were like, don't act like that around the dancers. You, you know, like just don't, you don't need to go out partying with them. They're your employees. Just kind of go back to your own hotel rooms at the end of the night. Maybe she didn't listen to that. I don't know, but I'm willing to bet that in her wake is a lot of criticism that she was never trying to hear. Not in the moment, not privately in her heart of hearts after she thought about it and like, okay, okay, maybe. But there's different motivations for being hard. We already established the people who are trying to level. They're disrupted by you. Mm. But then there's the people who genuinely have what they believe is useful feedback. Is it gonna be warm and fuzzy? No. So how can we deal with criticism in the moment, okay? Like I said, I've been watching Shogun. It's really good. Uh, and there's an episode called The Eightfold Fence. And the concept of The Eightfold Fence, I won't go into it because I'm not Japanese and I can't do it justice to explain it. If you are, please explain it um, down in the comment section. But it goes back to like basically, kind of not just the concept of, okay, so in the episode, uh, Mariko, who is like, oh, so pretty. Uh, and I have a crush on Omi. I think he's really cute. Okay, he looks like one of my exes. Mm. Anyway, Mariko says she's like, we believe in something called the Eightfold Fence. It's basically like a way to dissociate and compartmentalize bad things. And so that you're just like, boom, 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 behind all these layers, safe and alone. And I think it also ties into the concept of Japanese nationalism, like, and staying a bit closed off from the world. Again, explain this in the comments, but I was just doing a little research on it. And I thought, okay, huh, that's really interesting. I love dissociating, I love it. I love compartmentalizing and I love masking. Uh, if you're in the Chalantourage, you hear me talk about masking a lot because I'm a little on, I've got some dark sides. And so I need to put on an acceptable social mask more often than I don't. And so I'm hiding sometimes deep within. This has helped me deal with criticism. It's basically creating a thick skin. So how do you do this in the moment? And if you actually are, if you're Japanese or if you are familiar with the Eightfold Fence, I would like love to take a course in cultivating that, like how to do that more in real time. I hope that's not like an offensive thing to say. It's like, I wanna take a course in being an American patriot. Like what? I hope it's not. But if if you know if there's like transcendental meditation that can help you do it, but something that it's like in real time, not like, I did not enjoy what you said. I'm gonna go sit in the corner and meditate. Cause I can't, I can't do this. I need something that's a bit more seamless into society. But if you look throughout history, most people who get their way do so by non-reaction. This was Queen Elizabeth's big mood. Like this was her superpower of not reacting. And it was even in The Crown, one episode in The Crown, because Charles was like melting down over something. And she said, we're not reacting. I think it was like some documentary. And she said, not reacting is the hardest action of all. And it's really true because when we look at people who lash out and do all these things, people like Lizzo, they come across as animalistic, just reactionary. They come across as extremely unstable. And to predators, they also look very easy to manipulate. All you have to do is get them a little emotional and holy shit, that doesn't take much. You gotta get them off centered, off their footing. And now, 
let's dance. Now I can guilt you into something. Now I can manipulate you into something, browbeat you into something. I can hype you up into something, all to benefit me. Because what do we say at the beginning of this? You gotta brand yourself. Because if you don't, other people are going to use you as a tool or a weapon for their own aims. And what did Azalea Banks say about Lizzo? Girl, corporations have been incentivizing you to act like this. Hello, do you see how all these things tie back together? Because Lizzo doesn't actually know who she is. And if she does know, she doesn't like that person. So how we combine all these things, the eightfold fence, Lizzo, Azalea Banks, masking is something we can refer to as the Queen Elizabeth. If this example doesn't resonate, how about the Lily Vanderwoodson? Oh yeah, I love Lily Vanderwoodson. The mom from Gossip Girl. Um, I've been re-binging the show. Just, I'm like, these are my friends. And at one time they kind of were. It's just an amazing time in my life, just thinking back about all of that. But Lily is cool as a cucumber. She never screams, she never yells. Hmm, hello Charles. Like everything is smooth and cool. And Lily kind of comes out on top almost every single time. I mean, she'd been married like a billion times, super wealthy. These men are drawn to her. They bend over backwards for her. You know, I mean, I think she's an excellent example. And so when I know I'm going into a situation that is either going to be emotional or faced with criticism, I zip myself into my Lily Vanderwoodson suit. Sometimes I will put on that low bun. I am just a white girl after all. You know, I'm doing the best I can over here. So this is how you react. <laughs> you don't. You don't, you give the Lily Vanderwoodson smile. Mm. Let's say your boss tells you that a presentation you worked really hard on and it was long, it was detailed and thorough, and he's like, uh, pfft, boring. I just really need like the top level stuff, okay? Like I don't really need to hear the minutia, so why don't you go back and rework it? Just give me basically the elevator pitch on this new idea. And you're crushed. There's only two ways you can take criticism. You can take it badly or you can take it worse. You can take it bad or you can take it worse. There's only two choices. Anyone who's like, oh, I, I thrive on criticism. You are a liar. You're a liar, okay? Get out of my house. No, you can't take any cheese for the road. Get out. I don't believe that. It's just, it's not human nature. You know, I'm a pretty strong, pretty confident person. Who the hell wants to hear that somebody doesn't like something that they're doing? Especially when your heart is in it, your ego's in it, your time is in it. So I want you to react to this scenario in your Lily Vanderwoodson. Okay, so you would like it to be shorter, just the elevator pitch and, and just briefer overall. That showed that boss that I slash Lily was listening, right? Because what do people usually want when they give feedback? They wanna be heard. They wanna be heard. Whether they have a vested interest in this outcome, it's the boss, he has an interest in this project, whatever, or it's a friend just being like, hey, uh, I don't know that this is like a great thing for you. People wanna be heard. They wanna feel like they have a voice. Like this is just human psychology kind of 101. Then you go home and you cry. Then you go home and you cry. People who have non-reaction, which I think is like a Buddha level behavior, like it's incredible, don't misunderstand that like, it means you can never feel anything and you legitimately have to, so oh, that doesn't even bother me. Girl, you just fake it. You fake shit all the time. <laughs> like you do, do you not? Are you not constantly like faking things in society? Okay, this is a good one to fake. This is something you need to fake. Again, in the Chalantrage, come and join us, 700 girls, five extra videos a week, pep talks, advice, all this good stuff, links down below. Anyway. I talk about how masking is incredibly important and you need to be doing this as a human because your authenticity should be strategic and it should be deployed when it benefits you. And if it doesn't, absolutely don't do that. But I need to feel how I feel. No one's telling you that you can't. You just can't do it right there in that moment. I'm gonna shoot you straight because the people who do are the crazy ones. Think about it with dating. Think about it with dating. When you react to a guy and you send that unhinged text message that's in your notes app, 500 words, yeah, when you send that, you might feel better in the moment, like for 30 seconds, and you're like, oh my God. 
Does it always lead to a good outcome? No, not always. And I have actually found <laughs> that when we go ballistic on a guy, they write us off as crazy. That's when they write us off as crazy. Very few guys are gonna write off a girl as crazy when she just doesn't react. Maybe she doesn't respond to that text message. She leaves him on red. She gets up, she's like, you know, I'm, I really must be going. It's going to be such an early day tomorrow, but I've had a lovely evening. Thank you for telling me you're dating somebody else. I hope you have a wonderful night. What that actually does is it gives a man room to first of all, get confused. And the confusion will inevitably lead him down a rabbit hole to his own um, idiocy. It will. It might not happen on the timeline you want, but it does happen. But when we lash out, a guy's like, oh, she's crazy. I didn't do anything wrong. You negate that chance for them to see what the fuck they've been doing wrong. Because I guarantee you they have. I mean, obviously, men do things wrong all the time. But it's that, it's that silence that lets them be like, oh. Maybe that was wrong. I don't know. With me, I get far better outcomes when I'm Lily Vanderwoodsing Woodsering it than when I'm Lizzoing it. Does it feel good in the moment? No. No. Neither does dieting. I mean, could we draw some parallels there? We all struggle with this. We all struggle with this. But if we can break down into bite-sized pieces, zip yourself in a Lily Vanderwoodson suit. Paraphrase what someone is saying to you. Maybe thank them. Hey, thanks for your input. Again, can't promise I'm gonna take it, but I get what you're saying. I totally get what you're saying. Then we become so much stronger in the face of it. And especially when we pair that with our own self-branding. Who actually am I? Because then you have a response. Let me know what you guys have to say. What would you tell Lizzo? If you could, again, two things you're gonna start doing, girl, and two things you are never gonna do again. Now, bonus points. Two things for yourself. Two things you are gonna start doing for your brand and two things that do not align with this brand of who you are. And come up, come up with three words for your brand. Three words, I challenge you. And I want you to put this down below. Come up with three words for your personal brand. Mine would be bold, confident, glamorous. And whenever I'm like, oh, should I partner with this company? Should I do this? I'm like, does this align? Is it bold, confident, and glamorous to be doing a promo ad for barbecue charcoal? Perhaps not. Maybe that's just not my vibe. <laughs> Boys cook for me. I don't, I'm not out there working a grill. Like I just killed a saber-toothed tiger. No, thank you. Let me know what you guys have to say. Um, and like I said, if you want to switch up your branding, if you're like, you know what? I do need a little bit of a reset. Head to the link down below to join XO Stylebox, my clothing rental subscription <laughs> service. You can get the first month free. Keep clothes as long as you want. Swap as many times as you want in a month and mix up your style a little bit. You know, it's springtime. Let's all get looking good and feeling good. All right, I will see you later, Shalligators.